Welcome to my review on the HNS UK book stand, metal book stand to be precise. Well, most part of it is metal and part of it is plastic. Um, it's described as a cookbook stand, stroke book stand. Um, here it is. It has the HNS logo on the top there. UK, HNS UK. Um, the top here is metal. Uh, we have the base, which is a kind of hardened plastic, which is solid enough. We have at the back the stand in order to enable the book stand, the metal part of the book stand to stay erect and that I think there's seven one two three four five six seven potential positions for the book stand and we have number one so we can see there we have number two number three Four, five, six, and seven. So it's quite a good uh, variation there and broad spectrum uh, concerning where you would need the book stand to be in order for you to do what you're doing with it. Um, so I'm just going to put it on the second one. Maybe the third, yeah, I'll put it on the third one for now. I'll turn it around, as you can see, it's, it's up, ready and going now. So, just raise the canvas slightly. In fact, I'll put it down one more. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, on the plastic stand, which is holding the metal stand, we have these, I think they're metal, are they metal or plastic? Well, yeah, I think they're, they're plastic as well. <coughs> they're not sprung loaded, or they just basically will stay there, stay there, stay there, or whatever. So they're not, you know, they're not, you, you've got to put them into position. Um, you put them all the way across there. And... It is actually fairly solid. You get you can get wood ones. You can get you know different um, makeups of the materials that they're made from. And I would I'd look for a while uh, at different ones, the wood ones, etc. And I saw this metal one. I thought, yep, yeah, that ticks all the boxes for me. And so what I'll do, I'll give you a brief. Um, demonstration for the different size books that you could put on there uh, here's the first one I'm going to use as you can see it's um, fairly big fairly thick so if I open it up and as you can see it would just spring back without these and then you'd put it there that's maybe okay let's see as I, can, as I can see, you can have to use a bit more. We've got well, yeah. That's that's you know if you if you don't if you want to go hands free, you know, and um, I can't really see you wanting to read your book using it, unless of course you know it's going to sit in there completely. Um, depending on the book binding and so on, but for good cookbooks in the kitchen, because they're quite big, aren't they? You know, you'd be able to use this and then just flip the page or leave it there. Most recipes are on the same page. Um, so there's the first one. I'll just release this one. Now we have our second one. Okay, that just that's the hardback, different size, 
a bit longer, a little bit thicker. Okay, I shall open it up roughly in the middle. Okay, now I can sit there. Now that one actually sits there, so it's a hard back. That's a, so some will, will sit there, and you can, you know, if you're reading it, you know, if you don't want to, if you've got a sore neck, something like that, you'd be able to use this. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You know, because a lot of the times we're bent over, aren't we? You know, trying, trying to read our books and so on. But this is, you know. Plus also, if you're doing a review of something on your book or whatever, and rather than holding the book and taking the camera out of focus each time, you'd be able to just let it sit there. And the autofocus on the camera, if it's not that good, will not need to be too busy and too hazy. As I've discovered in... Uh, sometimes with the when you're doing a review, if you're moving the book around too much, it, it has difficulty focusing on the text of the book. So, I mean, you could use. Let's see if you use these on this one. Yeah, there you go. We'll still use you. Don't have to have it all the way up. Yeah. Okay. So that one there. Put that aside. Okay. Here we have another one, um, again, thinner, another hardback, um, different size again, and it does actually, there's a lip at the bottom there, with a curvature coming over, which is slightly raised above the base, so, you know, you could use that as well like that, if you want to use it as a display, you could use it as a display for your books or whatever, um, just to let you know, this book is an excellent book. It's about um, uh, basically um, dinosaurs as we know them today. They were name, named in the middle of the 19th century uh, by Richard Owen. Uh, about dinosaurs and the evidence in picture form and textual form within the book that dinosaurs as we know them today, uh, which means the word dinosaur is Latin for large, terrible lizard, uh, actually didn't die out 65 million years ago. And when I learned this, I was amazed. You know, in school we're taught that the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. And man did not live alongside the dinosaurs or the large, terrible lizards. Um, and... It wasn't until we started digging up the bones of the large, terrible lizards that we discovered uh, these large, what we know in our cultures, which we've got depicted on many flags, on many buildings, and they used to know them as dragons, um, and which would suit the descriptions of dragons and the pictures of dragons and the depictions of dragons we see all over the world. Uh, when the bones were dug up in the 19, middle of the 19th century, that's when we discovered them. And then we started applying an evolutionary interpretation to what we were digging up. And they came up with the conclusion that, well, these creatures died out 65, in between 60, 70 million years ago. I mean, that number keeps changing, whatever. 60 to 70 million years ago. Uh, before man and humanity came on the scene, so therefore we didn't witness or observe them. But the strange thing is, as I've already said, is if we didn't observe them, then why are the depictions, drawings, why do we use them in our cultures and our flags? Uh, and they were drawing pictures of these and showing evidence that we lived alongside what we know as dinosaurs, large terrible lizards. Uh, before the middle of the 19th century. And these accounts of what we know as large terrible lizard dinosaurs, Marco Polo spoke about them. Right the way back, Alexander's army witnessed them. They were terrified. The soldiers were terrified they, when they came across them. And they, and they were, you know, all kinds of what we would clearly describe as dinosaurs it's been demonstrated that they have, do, whether they do still now, I don't know. Uh, there could still be one or two left alive somewhere in the world that they 
man has lived alongside them and man's history of man and dinosaur coexisting is bountiful in the world and this book gives lots of those demonstrations for that um we even see there's a now the, oh, just just a sidetrack here now this book when i received it there's the front i'm not sure whether it's a valuable book anymore because obviously uh, you know sometimes if there's a misprint in a book then it can become more valuable than others so anyway when i first got this book i opened it up and to discover i'll use the book holder that the back was at the front of the book but not only that the back was upside down so basically what i have to do is turn it over and then we get the back of the book upside down and we open it and we should unless it's changed overnight there we go look at this So there you go, just a uh, little addition there, just right okay. There we go, the int introduction. As you can see now, I'm using this book and it's easy to use on this book stand. Easy to use. So let me see. There is one, basically the book. There's lots of, um, we have here. Um, T Dinosaur T-Rex flesh being taken blood cells oxidized whatever taken from the fossil uh, of a large level as a dinosaur and when the scientists who discovered this um pulled this out of the bone or the well yeah it was still tissue it hadn't actually fossilized the outer part had fossilized when they pulled out they were absolutely stunned and couldn't believe that dinosaur flesh tissue blood cells could survive 60 to 70 million years well they can't it's impossible so what they started to say oh well look at this there must be some special conditions to be able to enable dinosaur soft tissue to last 60 to 70 million years no 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 they just they didn't question their world view and their ages they tried to fit the evidence into the a priori preconceived template of evolution but no we all know flesh soft tissue dna cells it's not going to last 60 to 70 million years ago and obviously this tyrannosaurus rex fossil didn't die 60 to 70 million years ago but obviously in order for this to stay as it is it um, clearly would have died thousands you know probably i would say maybe four thousand four to four and a half thousand anything from four and a half thousand years ago downwards towards towards this towards our present date uh, so that's one of them in there, and it gives all kinds of different ones. Uh, uh, some more um, depictions. Uh, so on. Let me see. And we have the dinosaurs where they've been found in America. Uh, the Mayan Mayans have got the petroglyphs in in, in the Mayans, uh, and and then again Mexico. They've got them. Oh, there's, I shall, there's, a few, there's one there, which is a depiction. I think that's a carving. Oh, on a jug. Uh, and then we see, uh, we got the dates. These were all, this was far, 900 AD. 900 AD. So how did they know what a proterosop, terra, yeah, I can't even pronounce the word, pro, pro, protoceratops looked like? In 900 AD, unless they'd seen them on the jug. Okay, there's what we have more clay, clay objects, and there we have the similar things. Uh, there we go, more pottery or whatever it is. There we go on cloth. You can see it there. I. 
what, what date was this? Let's see. Um, 900 AD to 1470 AD. I'm sorry, but this is just, you know, a long time before um, we started digging up dinosaur bones. And notice something? They came, they were, they were actually depicted complete with the flesh on, even to the, to the basic colours. I mean, so they didn't just dig up bones, as some have claimed, and then put them together. They would have, they got them precisely right, and there's just no way they would have, here's, here's one, uh, UK. Now, they have them on cathedrals, uh, let's see which one this is now, we have here. Um, London, uh, River Thames, uh, many of the cathedrals, exquisite, exquisite depictions, uh, 15th century dragons in conjunction with a human figure, dragons in medieval cathedrals, depiction of dinosaurs, um, this one's Carlisle Cathedral, now this is where, hopefully, soon we'll come across Bishop Bell's. Um, so there they are, there, you see them, the diamonds, you know, 15th century, come on. Okay, there's more, St. Andrew's Hall, Juvenile jet Tetrapod, uh, te Theropod. There we go, that's what a Juvenile Theropod would look like. And we have here, the carving on St. Andrew's Hall, in the UK. So, if you live anywhere near these places, then um, take a visit, and I'm sure you'll be... Right, okay, this is Carlisle, Carlisle Cathedral, obviously Carlisle. Uh, there's a bishop, Bishop Richard Bell, buried in the floor of the cathedral in 1496. For, it's the 15th century, okay, that's what, 500 years ago. Didn't start digging up fossil boat, dinosaur bones, large terrible lizard bones. Until middle of the 19th century. Okay. Now he's laid in the ground. This is his tomb in the ground. With brass plaque. Brass surroundings. Which you can see here. And. Basically what they would do. Is put depictions around the tomb in the brass. Carvings of animals and things that they would have witnessed at the time of their through their life and we see fish we see um some kind of bird here uh we see is that a dog we see a bat okay there's the plot and here we see clearly what looks like, what is the neck coming all the way down? A dinosaur. That's, what is it? A, uh, they actually, let's see, figure 73. Uh, shows a digital reconstruction once those dots are connected. And all oh, right, okay, let's see. So, and again here, we see up there, and look at the tail of this creature. Sharp points. So, these are clearly dinosaurs of some sort locked in battle look at their heads you can you can see it and again here creatures and what kind of creature had these on their tail a shunasaurus tail reconstruction a shunas so this would have been the one on probably the one on the left i see it looks to me like this one on the right is, is something else uh it says here shunasaurus um and we come over here, the larger, and the one on the right, a Volcanodon reconstruction. So, placed in the brass carvings of a tomb in Carth Carlisle Cathedral 500 years ago. How did they know? about dinosaurs unless of course they saw them and witnessed them and they were just normal every day obviously scary and they would have been killed off because they became pests like 
as when we start encroaching upon more land to use, we come into contact with wild animals and, this, and whales. You got the Welsh, you got the, in Wales, you got the Welsh flag. I mean, look at the Welsh flag. Yeah, dragon, large, terrible lizard. Look, remember, not penned until 1850s, middle of the 19th century. St David's Cathedral. Here we go. You know, like here we got them in Netherlands. We've got them in. Uh, look at them. There's one. Kill it. Look at the depiction. 1440 AD. France, the same. Canada, I mean, there is not just one or two. They are all over the world, and this is only touching the surface. Look at this one. Look at that. It's astounding. I get excited when I look at this because, you know, you can see clearly. Sixteen hundred AD. Okay. Now this not starting to get dug up until the middle of the nineteenth century. I keep repeating that just to get it in there. A Nothosaurus reconstruction. I'm sorry, but if people can't see the similarities there, then there's a problem. It's called willful denial. Okay, let's see what we've got here. St. Michael and the Dragon. Where's this? Italy. We've got them in Italy. Oh, look, oh, look at this. I mean, this is amazing. 14th century. You can see it here. And the reconstruction. Ornithalestos reconstruction. Yep. And... There's more, there's Marley, um, Marley again, Ethiopia, depictions, uh, China, depictions, and there's lots more in this book, um, I might do it in more in depth review on this book so if you're interested in buying this book you can get this uh, online I'm sure if you put it and stick it into Google Google untold sit or Amazon untold secrets of planet earth dire dragons by Vance Nelson okay I'm just going to uh, read Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 26 but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.